Okay, here we go. Uh, guys, please welcome Daniel Tham Thomas, and uh, he will start his lecture about the future of play to earn opportunities and challenges. Uh, good luck, Daniel. Thank you, Veronica. Hello, everyone. Um, glad to be here. Get, gra very great to be at the Hyper Games Conference. And um, today's lecture is about the future of play to earn. Uh, before I dive into what, it, what the future is, I would like to go into how games are today and why this uh, play to earn thing that emerged last year promises a lot of great things without, uh, of course, ignoring the challenges that come along the way. Right now, all the games are a bit or more unidirectional. This means uh, the developer e either publishes the game or goes through a publisher, publishes the game, and then reaches the consumer, which in turn spends the money, has the fun, the money is transferred to the developer, but the player is, um, let's say, left without, I'm left only with the entertainment. And some of you, or most of you, that come from the uh, traditional gaming space, and I've been doing this for 15 years, so I'm, I'm an old guy as well, uh, may think, but that's why we make the games. And you are correct. But at the same time, the consumer trends are shifting towards people wanting to own stuff. And uh, one of the examples that this is uh, actually visible is court litigations based on game investments. Who owns what from the money that has been invested? So uh, this is just one little more extreme edge case. Also, um, games today are not privacy focused. This means uh, in order for a developer and a publisher to make money, they need to gather data about the user in order to target them in advertising campaigns, which means privacy-wise, you're still... Um, left with that mark you know the cookies you know the gdpr but still it can be done um one of the most dreaded things even if players say they do not uh enjoy it is the in-game uh, i mean they they say they do not don't necessarily dislike it uh is the in-game advertising why when i'm saying they are not necessarily disliking it i mean if they could be uh, have the experience in game without the ads, they would enjoy it. But they see the ads as a means to an end. Like if you want a rewarded ad in order to get something, then it it's an acceptable trade for uh, that type of interaction. Also today, if uh, you want to develop a game and distribute it, you have a very high cost cost of entry. When I say this, and especially in mobile today gaming is mobile even if desktop say uh, the same but most people especially in hyper casual are mobile this means you need uh, a very tight operation aimed towards marketing and advertising so the cpi gets in the zone where it actually becomes profitable to market the game and there's a high burn of uh, good content because the cpis are not meant are not uh, hit right away. Uh, <clears throat> and this makes the focus of the whole operation, especially in a hyper-casual games, to be on the advertising and the marketing side. It's like, I would say, hyper-casual games um, become more elaborate ads so you can get to see more ads and to pay for stuff. And... Um, I truly believe there's a better way to do it and we're going to get to that part and what WAM is doing and how we're innovating. But first, I would like to go into how play to earn is changing traditional games and then what the current challenges are with play to earn. Play to earn basically means blockchain games. Uh, and these are bi uh, bi-directional. The developer create something, asks for uh, crypto in return for payments, and the user gets something of value that they can later trade, their, trade it if they decide to do it. 
So this is a decision that relies and uh, is on the consumer side. If you do not want to sell it, if you do not want to do anything with, uh, let's say, an NFT that you just earned, that's your choice. But if you can want to do it and you can do it, then you can sell it. So this is a big advantage. A lot of people from the traditional space come and say, yeah, but you don't need this. Um, you don't own it anyway. We're going back to what I said in the beginning, and uh, that is we have this consumer trend shift where people want to own stuff. Blockchain technology enables us to actually be able as uh, technology companies and game developers to offer this to our community and to, to the users that come and play. Uh, players, uh, by this respect, will own their investments in the game. Um, this means it's more attractive for them and it will become more and more attractive to them to play play to earn games that have or that have this mechanic and especially that use the blockchain as technology versus traditional games i'm not saying all the market will do it uh i'm not saying the model is perfect but this is where the consumers go and you can see it in the growing stats each year uh web3 is privacy oriented so uh, all of a sudden the discussion about privacy can be uh, pretty straightforward how i log in how i uh, don't log in how i can get my funds what is the kyc all of a sudden it's each member's and each user's choice to actually decide what they do and how they do it uh, there's a medium cost of distribution um, and one of the reason is uh, most web3 games are right now web-based this means the cost of getting a user on a web browser even if it's a mobile web browser, is lower than having an actual install. And um, we're a true believer in the browser tech and it's uh, that browsers and uh, progressive web apps in particular and uh, WebAssembly technology uh, can help uh, a, rena a renaissance of browser games and browser tech because it makes no sense to develop native games when you have the browser doing a lot of things, uh, mostly all of the things that the native app can do and the costs are lower. And one thing that uh, the play to earn is more stringent on and focuses on is the focus on the community. Because in web three and play to earn, everything is about a community that actually enjoys these games. Now, there are challenges with the play to earn model. And uh, I'm going to go through them because these challenges are real. They exist. They make the adoption of play turn a bit difficult. But it's the same thing with every emerging technology. The business models at the beginning are not fully formed. Um, it's up to the companies that believe in innovation, want to do innovation, and see the potential to experiment with these business models. WAM is doing this. And uh, we believe um, play to earn will be just play in five years, as mobile games are now games. And uh, e mail is uh, the former email. It's just uh, the turmoil at the beginning of a trend and, uh, and the beginning of a, a new technology shift and a paradigm shift in how consumers uh, actually use and um, want to use products and especially digital products now the challenges with play to earn today are the following there is no set business model this means a lot of the business models that are being tested out can fail and most likely will fail does that stop us no because innovation comes from testing out different things and seeing how people adapt and uh, taking feedback from that community that, that I was mentioning and implementing it in product iterations. One other challenge is the high perceived cost of entry in the blockchain space. A lot of developers, and especially the ones coming from the traditional space, think, oh my God, I have to learn a new technology. Blockchain is complicated. It brings no real value. Um, the developers developing on blockchain are really expensive. Um, how will the users uh, pay? There's a barrier entry regarding uh, wallets, regarding uh, fiat on ramp, uh, which means the ability to, play, to pay with a credit card in order to get the crypto asset, be it a token, be it a, an NFT. Also, another challenge is the tokenomics. 
most of the tokenomics that are being right now put into market are not sustainable on in the long run and the uh, the tokenomics of most companies need adjustment because there's no um, let's say perfect loop where uh, the tokens get back into the economy of the app um, you have hacks most likely all of you have heard or if not you will about uh, the hacks that Axie Infinity had where they lost about 600 million dollar worth of tokens and that is again a blow to the emerging ecosystem and industry uh, most games are not deep so they do not keep the users long enough in order to get that lifetime value and to have a sustainable product for years right um, and this let's say hits that side where um, the economics of most games are not sustainable also right now most play to earn games have the same user this uh, users this means uh, the users from Axie Infinity will try out Swam, will try out other games, and uh, the same pool of users just go from game to game. So we're still, we still have to work for uh, mass play to earn adoption, but we're getting there. And um, it, it's exciting to be innovating in this space, and I encourage you to do it uh, because being at the beginning of a new trend um, actually gives out a lot of advantages and um, easier partnerships because like-minded people imagine how the future can be better using this technology. So the technology itself is not uh, the focus. It's the solution to some problems that the market currently has and some opportunities that the current, the, the current market uh, currently wants. Also, Right now, as I, I think I previously said, most games are focused on crypto users. This means my mother will not understand the play to earn concept, even though she may want to play on WAM. And now the mission is how can we get, for instance, the 1.5 billion players around the world that consider themselves to be hyper casual uh, and casual people to actually just play and use their, uh, let's say, credit cards to enjoy the game and have uh, a good experience inside a game without thinking of the complicated words like blockchain, crypto, transactions, signatures, and all that. Because that is not the purpose of games. Not, that is not the purpose of platforms like Wham. The, the purpose is to make the technology invisible while providing more value than traditional business models and platforms. Uh, one other challenge play to earn has today is the expectations of retail investors, which is insanely high. This puts a lot of pressure in the developers and uh, on the teams that imagine the possibilities to deliver stuff that is not viable. And that is an actual problem because uh, it's sacrificing long term vision and uh, uh, potential for short, potential short-term game, because that is not even assured, uh, because the other challenges, play turn games depend on the macro. So this is, the, these are combined. Um, also, traditional gamers hate NFTs and crypto. There's a misunderstanding of why that is, uh, but one of the main reason this misunderstanding exists is because of the rug pulls that keep showing up. So you have the companies that want to innovate and want to build something of value and that actually uh, challenges the whole business model and the whole ecosystem to bring a new, uh, um, let's say, a new paradigm. And this is how things are done, like WAM is doing. And you have all the scammers that do things like copy projects and they say, we're going to put pickles on blockchain in this game and you will be able to sell it for millions of dollars. And then they do a rug pull and every people, every person that invests in that project remains with the feeling that all play to earn projects are the same, which is not true. Now, I think I'm 15 minutes into my uh, uh, very hopefully not boring lecture, but I'm going to the part where why is WAM 
uh, different? What is WAM? Why is WAM different? And why WAM is uh, leading the way in the future of play to earn? So WAM is a hyper casual games platform where people come to play tournaments in order to win crypto rewards and NFTs. We launched our token in the 20th of December. Uh, we raised $2.8 million uh, in December in order to make this shift. We come from the traditional space where we developed the app. We got nominated to the best innovation category twice in, a, uh, in two years. And we decided based on community feedback and uh, market opportunity to make a spin and innovate in the hyper casual space by building a platform that allows developers and us to publish hyper casual games in a new form like the tournament uh, way to see what happens is it's just a uh, uh, an opportunity a huge opportunity that we see in the market why we're different we're not a game this is very important we're developing game technology and game publishing technology on web3 and we're doing it on hyper casual games the purpose is to have a platform where people can own things can play things uh, in order to win uh, rewards where developers can publish their games just like you do it on a normal uh, Apple on, uh, or, or Google Play. But the difference would be developers would have direct contact with their customers, with their users, with their community. This is the Web3 ethos that we want to follow. Like It's a free market. We just give the platform. Uh, we give give the technology and the means to do it, and everybody minds their own uh, uh, objectives and looks for their own business on the platform. Um, marketers will be able to promote each piece of content in order to get rewards. This all being done through smart contracts and uh, through the technology that we are building. Uh, and we believe platforms like Wham are necessary for the future of play to earn to exist, but the WAM is, will not be the only one, the only platform. Um, WAM is just one of the actors and one of the companies that is innovating and um, is actually pushing the boundaries of what play to earn can be. But of course, we have people that went before us and opened the way. And I, as I mentioned, uh, Axie Infinity leads this. Uh, there are more um, games today that do it. Uh, a lot of talented people, excited people, uh, very uh, focused people that work on bringing a new reality to fruition. And that is a place, uh, a reality where uh, Web3 enables a whole new set of business models uh, surround the, uh, surrounded by tokens and NFTs. Um, so I would say in, in a nutshell, the future of play to earn, um, is communities, platforms, and, um, easy, easy adoption. Once these are in place, and of course the security of the blockchain and of the smart contracts are tightened, uh, is tightened and, uh, people get more trust in this type of medium the adoption will skyrocket like it happened before. So imagine this. I'm old enough to have seen what happened in the 2000, 2010. It was Flash and then it was mobile apps. Um, at the beginning, people are skeptical and then they start to experiment. And then out of that experimentation, innovation springs out. And that innovation will uh, trigger a race for uh, the best product and consumers will actually pick the right stuff. So this, I would say, is um, what I believe to be the future of play to earn. Um, now, let's see one thing, because the, the lecture that currently exists, let's see. So somebody writes in the chat uh, regarding what I just said is because the gamers look at NFTs as a tool to fetch money and not actually give gaming value. Just like, 
they hate hyper casuals. Yeah, th this might be um, a way to see it. Um, I would say m gamers don't look at NFTs as just a tool. Retail investors look at NFTs as just a tool to get money. And gamers have this perception that they will get, uh, let's say, mm, they will lose their money. But this is not the purpose of, uh, of games. The, f the main purpose of WAM and a community-driven product, either it's a game or a platform, is to trigger a feeling amongst its members. And that is having fun, enjoying, and this is what we want to achieve with WAM, having fun and enjoying the games and the tournaments with your friends. Of course, you can earn stuff, but the focus is on play. Uh, yeah, Daniel, thank you so much for your great speech. And uh, yeah, a couple of questions for you. Well, yes. let's start with one. Um, what are your top three P2E games? Like from, from your uh, play to earn games, like from your personal opinion, your top three. <laughs> Accepting mm -hmm. Wham or with Wham? Both. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, definitely, definitely my number one pick is Wham, but um, that is obvious why. Axie Infinity, because they opened the way to this whole new paradigm shift. They were innovating before a lot of people, and actually we were inspired by their efforts. And uh, I would say a third would be Sandbox. Mm-hmm. But it's still not uh, not a fully formed idea. But I, I just love the innovation. I love the the graphics uh, and with uh, with a due courtesy to all other uh, co let's say industry peers that are working really hard on uh, developing their play to earn models. Um, I would say I respect all of them. It's it's just a matter of getting my hands on each of them. I know it's hard. I know it's uh, it, it's a lot of work being put into that but i would say if top three these are the ones but i would say all okay yeah fair enough <laughs> okay and uh how do you distinguish which play to earn game is uh good and which one is not really and it had to be developed more well now i have an option to be arrogant or not or to seem arrogant or not uh, i'm not in a position to judge uh each developer's creation because if it's not fully formed and it's still a work in progress there are a lot of things that can uh, um, be on the roadmap and are not seen yet so i would not go and and say yeah i know how this game should be or what this plat platform should be um so in this respect i just want to support like every person who is doing this who's innovating and uh just work and figure it out so very crappy answer but this is the reason why i'm giving it yeah well but honest one yeah and uh when uh, you were talking about the future um so what kind of events could uh, make uh, players want to play uh, this kind of games more and like put more attention on them and, like what, what should happen and uh, how long play to earn games uh, will be well not like on top but uh, very popular five years. five years i give them five years for that i would say even faster it's all a matter of uh, weeding out the bad actors in the industry that want to do the rug, the rug pulls and the hacks they will always be like this but as an industry matures bad actors are weeded out more and more often um, one of the um, uh, things that we experienced with bad actors is when we launched our token in the 20th of December, we were tired as crap and we said, okay, once we launch it, we're going to get some time off to recharge. It was the holidays and so on. 12 hours after we launched, we got a massive flood attack from Singapore. Unfortunately, from one of our competitors, because we saw it in the logs where it came from, um, and we had to... Uh, postpone relaxing and uh, fix our servers and look for for the servers to uh, keep going so the users can experience web. That being said, um, five years and everybody will just play 
without thinking of earning because that will be natural. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have another question in chat. Which blockchain uh, protocol are you using? Um, how many users you have on board uh, in your platforms? Or are you relying more on games develop game developers and their audience? And uh, just a feedback, a session with a presentation is always good. Well, okay, <laughs> that's, that's a feedback. Okay, yeah, so the, yeah. <laughs> let's take the, the first question. What blockchain are we on right now? We're on Binance Smart Chain. Mm -hmm. I think we have, uh, if I were to uh, just give me like 30, 30 seconds to see how many mm -hmm. holders we have. 4,300 uh, holders right now without the exchanges. And uh, I think we have on the Elrond network uh, more than 3,000 as well. So in total, more than 7,000 holders. Uh, right now, the active smart chain is Binance. We have big plans for um this topic and one of the reason is reasons this is is because we're a bit chain agnostic at this point we're developing on the blockchain technology if that changes we will announce it there are opportunities in that space as well um and um yeah binance the next question was after the what chain are we on i'm a guy and i forget um yeah, I'm looking at them. So, XE and the other blockchain projects experienced rough uh, inflation with more users uh, in uh, flowing the platform. How when tokens are secured against that? Okay, so we have a fixed supply of 1 billion tokens that will be released in the next 10 years. 40% uh, of the supply goes to community rewards. Um, each tournament that a user joins has a fee. And out of that fee, we right now we're burning 20%. Since we launched the play to earn, um, we had about 300,000 transactions. These are not on chain. So you, you will have to take my word for it until we go on chain. Um, we focused in the past six months into bringing play to earn uh, to fruition and um, to getting more users to know about the WAM token because in crypto, this is a different uh, angle which companies have to look at. Uh, right now, we have six, 7,000 users per day out of which 25% on average make these transactions. And uh, this is why we, we see it as a huge opportunity because in the traditional model, having uh, paying customers uh, above uh, single digit percentages is outrageous. And we are thinking, why only 25%? Mm -hmm. And um, do you contact the devs who created the original game? So copycat them and add to your platform? We, we do not copycat. I mean, we... Uh, we work only with developers. We license the games. We're a platform. So we do not do any mm -hmm. uh, games in-house. It's not our focus. And it's not our skill. Creating catchy, hyper-casual games requires a lot of talent, a lot of focus. And we know more how to build game publishing tech and game tech. Mm -hmm. And here's a, a question. How can we make games with you guys? And what do we need? Well, I think you can answer it here and maybe then you will connect and chat in person. Also. Yeah, please please reach out. Uh, we will launch our game developer program later this year. Right now we are in private discussions, uh, private agreements with several studios around the world. Uh, we're doing it steadily because developing for Web3 requires a lot of um, security audits and um, just a lot of development in short and once we get to a stage where we have the developer pro, uh, developer platform ready we will start onboarding a lot more people so they can um, just experiment on the play to earn side to see how web3 works to make it easy to to make money through crypto and so on and so forth okay and uh 
We're actually already out of time. Um, Daniel, thank you so much for interesting lecture and uh, such uh, cool answers. Uh, and uh, our audience, uh, please uh, reach out Daniel to yes. the state. And thank you so much. Thank Have you, Veronica. One. Thank you, guys. Uh, please reach out Twitter, Telegram. Uh, you have a, a, on our website, join our communities, and we'll connect there. Thank you, guys. Yep. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye.